What's happening guys? We're back and we're doing fiberglass again today. Alright guys, I know at the end of last episode I said we were going to move on to mocking up the steering rack and the chassis. Um, but I started looking around and this hood buck has been sitting in the corner of my shop for like over a month now, ready to go. And it's just taking up space. So we're going to focus wholeheartedly on the hood for a while. Uh, it's probably going to take a couple weeks to get the mold all done. But once we're done it, we can get rid of all this stuff and gain ourselves back a whole bunch of space. So today I want to get the front air dam molded up. Um, so that's going to take a fair bit of effort. Uh, first thing we got to do though, we need to come in here and make a flange to fiberglass up to because we're going to do this hood mold as a multi-part mold. So it's probably going to be about five pieces when we're all said and done. So we need to make flanges in between each of the pieces that we're going to, we're going to cast. So I got some playing cards. Um, I'm just going to come in here and hot glue them onto the, the edge here and make ourselves a flange. Um, if you are gluing up a flange, you want to glue it on a corner if possible. It just makes finishing that seam a lot easier once everything's cast. So we're going to glue it on this outside corner of the, the air dam and then we're going to cast that whole front section as one. So let's grab some cards and a hot glue gun and get to work. There's our flange all done. Um, it's actually fairly strong. I put a couple of cards kind of backing pieces on there so that this will like have a bit of rigidity. So now we've got to come in here and make a smooth transition between the buck and the playing cards. So the proper thing to use there would be something called filleting wax. Um, I don't have filleting wax. So instead I ran down to the, uh, the craft store and got some plasticine. So we're gonna use plasticine to kind of fill this gap and make a nice smooth transition. All right, we got plasticine all the way around. Um, it's not, it's working okay. Um, this is the first time I've used playing cards for the uh, for the dam like we're doing. Uh, they're not the best. They tend to be really flexible, uh, so I'm finding that you know they're pulling away from the the buck. Also, the buck is already waxed. They're not sticking very well to it, and it's getting to be kind of a headache. Uh, probably the right way to do this would have been to use a sheet of uh, Coroplast, like signboard, and cut it out and actually mount it quite securely. But we're going to give this a whirl. Hopefully it works. Um, hopefully we don't have to have how to make a mold part number three. So the next step is to PVA this all. But before we do that, I'm going to go over it with a little bit of mold release wax. Um, the buck is already waxed but kind of where we've been working on it, some of the wax has got wore off. So we'll do a nice light layer of wax. Uh, also probably put a little bit over top of the, uh, over top of the plasticine parts. Hopefully once again, just trying to get it so that this thing will come apart. So a little bit of wax and then we'll brush on some PVA.
All right, so we got one layer of PVA on there. Um, this is what we're using, this Pardol film number 10. Uh, it's meant to be sprayed on, but I just don't have the equipment to spray it on. So we're just brushing it on for this one. Um, I'm gonna try to put it on fairly thick. Uh, I'm not real concerned about the, the fine details coming out in the mold. Um, I've heard of guys using just PVA as a mold release. I've heard of guys using just wax as a PVA or as a mold release. Um, we're gonna use them both. Hopefully gives us the best shot. So I'm gonna let that dry overnight and then we'll come back tomorrow, put another couple coats on and I'll catch up with you guys when it's actually time to start laying fiberglass. And we're back. Um, the PVA is dried up on that, uh, that flange that we did yesterday. But I think I'm gonna call an audible here and pull the plug on the playing cards. Um, they're just not working out the way I want them to. They're getting kind of soggy. Um, the edges are, the faces are all waxed so it'll, uh, it doesn't get wet, but the edges are just raw cardboard. So I think the, uh, the PVA is soaking into the edges and making them flimsy. So this might work for some people. I know that this has worked for some people, the playing card flange. Um, I don't like it. So we're going to pull it off rather than beat our head against the wall. And I went out and got some uh, just Coraplast uh, signboard. You can get this stuff pretty cheap at sign shops. I actually just went in and asked if they had anything damaged. This one's got a couple of little marks on it and they gave it to me for free. So we're gonna pull off this flange and we're gonna put that one on and hopefully it'll be a little bit more sturdy. And then uh, when, when we go to put like our, our registration marks and stuff on it, it won't flex near as much. So step one, let's pull that, uh, that flange off and then we can mark up that, uh, that signboard and cut it out. All right, we got the, the flange all glued up. Uh, it's looking way better than the playing card flange did. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, the next step we gotta fill, there's a couple of slight gaps in between our flange and our buck. Um, the plasticine worked last time, but it wasn't great. So we're gonna try something different this time. I'm just gonna, I made this flange just pretty well flush with the front of here. So I'm just gonna come around here with packing tape and just tape over top of this and then uh, we can cast right up to that packing tape. Fiberglass actually releases really well off of tape, so we'll just packing tape that whole seam, and then we should be ready to PVA this thing again. All right, we got the seam all taped up, and then I went in and put on all the registration dots. Um, they're kind of random. I don't really know what the rest of the mold's gonna look like, so I put them where I think I need them. Uh, just a big gobble plasticine, let it harden a little bit, and then I came back with a razor blade and made little pyramids out of them. Hopefully that pyramid shape will allow us to, once we cast the other side, allow us to release them and put them back together again easily, and we won't, we won't get any mold bind. So the next step, PVA. All 
All right, we got another coat of PVA on. Um, the flange is definitely gonna need at least one, maybe two more coats of PVA in order to get a bit of thickness. Um, there is like a specific thickness that you're supposed to spray it to, but because we're brushing it on, we don't really have that good of control. But because we know that we're gonna have to do some post finishing on this part, I'm not real concerned about it. Um, I'm gonna put a couple more coats on. I just go until it's got a nice uniform green color and then color good. So I'm gonna put a couple more coats on this and then uh, we'll catch up with you guys again when it's time to do fiberglass. And we're back. And today is finally gonna be the day that we start laying resin. Um, the buck's all prepped. I came out yesterday and put another couple coats of PVA on. So I got a nice uniform layer over top of everything. Uh, so now we can actually start laying on the fiberglass. So the first step to that is we gotta put on like a gel coat. Um, I did a bunch of research and talked to a bunch of guys about this. Uh, gel coat is like double the price of resin. So if we can avoid it, we're gonna. Um, and everybody I talk to says that there's no real reason to go with a, with a specific gel coat. You can just use your resin as a, a gel coat. So we're gonna call it a gel coat. It's not really a gel coat. It'll be fine. So we're gonna use resin. Um, I got a big bucket of resin. I also picked up some, uh, some pigment. So the first couple coats here, we're gonna pigment them blue. That'll allow us to see when we're laying on our fiberglass mat if we have any air bubbles. Um, it'll also allow us when we pull that, that dam off, if there's any of that plasticine left over, the plasticine's red, our gel coat's gonna be blue. So we should be able to see pretty clearly if there's any of that plasticine left over that we gotta pull out. So we're gonna mix some of this up. We're gonna, we got some MEKP. Um, yeah, and then we're just gonna paint it on. All right, we'll let that set up. And then we can put a second coat on. I screwed up. Um, that looks really good. We got a nice, uh, nice even coat of resin on there. But when I mixed my resin, I didn't, uh, I misread the instructions. Um, the instructions call for one milliliter, which is about a drop of uh, hardener for every ounce of resin that you use. And I've done that in the past and it's worked well, but I misread it and had a brain fart and I added one milliliter of hardener for every 100 milliliters of resin, which is like one milliliter for every, I don't know, what would that be? I don't know. I didn't add enough. Um, I added about five drops when I should have added closer to 60. So that resin's never gonna cure. Um, so it's not gonna be a good mold surface. So I'm gonna clean all that off. Uh, I gotta go right back down to, to starting over with the, the wax and everything. Um, so I'm not gonna subject you guys to that. Um, I'll do that off camera and hopefully when we come back we'll have It'll look the exact same, but it'll be cured. And then we can start on our chop strand and everything like that. So in the meantime, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, hit the like and subscribe button. Go check us out on Instagram, Left Foot First Media, and we'll see you next week. I'm out of here.